Meet the Radeon RX 6600, AMD's brand new mid-range card that should be the most affordable GPU on the market. It is supposed to be a decent 1080p card with an MSRP of $329 without taxes in the US or around 350 euros with taxes here in the EU, which in theory is completely fine. But the reality is that the actual retail prices will be way above that. This Eagle card, for example, is expected to be around 550 to 600 euros. And do keep in mind that this is one of the more affordable models. I expect to see even higher prices for some fancier models listed today. And I kind of think that is what causes a lot of frustration among consumers, uh, not just the terrible state of the market as it is, but also hearing this very low MSRP when the actual prices will end up being double that. I think I would personally probably be more at peace just not knowing the MSRP at all. Anyway, let's see what this cheapest new card can do and if it's worth getting it at all. Let's begin. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their new HS80 RGB wireless gaming headset. The HS80 offers everything you would want as a gamer, including great audio with plenty of bass, Dolby Atmos support, a sleek design with a very comfortable fit and a long battery life so you can easily game for hours without any interruptions, and a microphone quality that is actually good. Whether you like to game on a PC or you prefer your PlayStation consoles, the HS80 will be an excellent choice for both. Check it out using the links in the description below. From a technical perspective, the 6600 is not a new chip. AMD is using the same RDNA 2 chips from the 6600 XT with a couple of cores less with slightly lower clock speeds and while they share the same 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM, the memory performance is slightly lower as well. As a result of all that, the power consumption is down significantly as well with a TDP of 132 watts versus 160 watts on the XT version. It's a bit hard to say what this card is competing with if you look at the GPU market here in the Netherlands for Nvidia's cheapest card, the RTX 3060, you will currently have to spend around 650 to 700 euros. And for the 6600 XT, you will have to set aside 600 to 650 euros, which leaves this 6600 non-XT without a proper rival. In AMD's own marketing slides, they're comparing it to the 2060 instead. And even though this is a card that is almost three years old, that comparison is not that crazy as it sounds because retailers are selling 2060s for those 550 to 600 euros we're expecting to see this new card at. That being said, the fact that AMD can beat a really terribly priced three-year-old card doesn't make this card a good deal. Since there are no reference cards, I'll be focusing on this Gigabyte Eagle model. And as I mentioned at the start, this should be one of the cheaper options on the market, which is also great as it is very unlikely that a super fancy 6600 will ever be worth recommending. And being a fairly basic model, there is not that many features we can talk about today. The backplate is plastic, there is no dual BIOS, no extra headers and no RGB. It does have three fans, which looks better in most standard ATX cases than the smaller two fan designs. And the color is nice and neutral to match most of the hardware out there. I'll mostly focus on how it compares to the 6600 XT and a 3060 that only should be a little bit more expensive. And while I don't have the original 2060, I did include the 2060 Super for reference, which is generally about 10% faster than the old 2060. I also included the 3060 Ti, which is selling for around 750 euros here. So it's not such a huge stretch if you consider that this card is going to be 550 to 600 euros. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, this card ended up roughly at the same performance as the 3060 with the 2060 Super not far behind. The 6600 XT and the 3060 Ti are considerably faster, especially at 1440p where the 6600 struggles to hit 60fps. In Far Cry 6, an AMD sponsor title, the 6600 is a bit behind the 2060 Super with the other cards ahead by a safe margin. On 1440p, this card starts falling behind a bit more, but still offers a pretty good experience. I will probably drop the older Far Cry 5 benchmark soon as Far Cry 6 is newer and uses the same engine, but it served as a reference for so long and I had the data anyway, so the results are roughly the same as with the Far Cry 6. 
Division 2 shows a pretty similar picture, with the 6600 just behind the 2060 Super, the 3060 sort of within reach, and the 6600 XT and the 3060 Ti comfortably ahead, especially on 1440p. Metro Exodus is a game where you should expect Nvidia to do better, as it is an Nvidia sponsored title, and here the 2060 Super is around 4% faster and the 3060 is around 8% faster on 1080p, but that gap grows to 10 and 28% respectively on 1440p. The 6600 XT is around 20% ahead on both resolutions and the 3060 Ti is pulling even further ahead than before. While Shadow of the Tomb Raider is also an NVIDIA sponsored title, the 6600 just beats the 2060 Super by about 2% on 1080p, with the 3060 8% ahead. The 6600 XT and the 3060 Ti are 16 and 31% faster respectively on 1080p, with that gap growing on 1440p. Troy Total War probably shows the worst result with the 6600 behind other cards by 20% or more, even on 1080p. I did retest all of these cards to verify the data, so I guess this game is just hit relatively hard by the lower memory performance of the 6600, or it just needs a driver fix. Of course, it's still nicely playable on both resolutions, it just, you know, doesn't look great. But the Borderlands 3 looks a lot better for AMD. This card is now significantly faster than the 2060 Super, and it's roughly on par with the 3060. Again, the 6600 XT does even better here, as well as the 3060 Ti. In Doom Eternal, this card is ahead of the 2060 Super, but a bit behind the 3060. Since this game runs smoothly on most GPUs, it doesn't really matter that much. However, anyone running a 240Hz monitor will see a benefit from either a 6600 XT or a 3060 Ti. In Control, it is only just behind the 2060 Super, with the 3060 about 20% ahead. Control is very heavy on the system, uh, with even the 3060 Ti barely hitting 60 FPS. And of course, it is an Nvidia title, so DLSS does make a huge difference if you were to turn it on. In Wolfenstein Youngblood, the 2060 Super is around 9% faster on 1080p and 17% on 1440p, which should put this card roughly at the level of the original 2060. Again, it is a title that runs on super high FPS anyway, so you shouldn't worry about playing it even on 1440p. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is probably the best example that lets AMD shine. This card is considerably faster than the 2060 Super, and even the more expensive 3060 is behind by about 7%. Even the 3060 Ti is barely faster on 1080p, and on 1440p, the 3060 pulls just ahead and the 3060 Ti pulls away again, but AMD is still looking very good. In Watch Dogs Legion, this card is again pretty close to the 2060 Super, with the 3060 being about 11% ahead. Still, for a heavy title like this one, I think it is pretty great that you get playable frame rates on both resolutions. Outriders puts this card a little bit behind the 2060 Super again, and it is another game that shows that if you're serious about Quad HD gaming, the XT will make way more sense. And finally, Cyberpunk, which is a very rough game to run for most GPUs, and here we see this card being a bit behind the 2060 Super once again. Expect to play it just fine, but just maybe drop a few settings down to stay above 60 FPS consistently. Looking at the average result over these 15 games, this card ends up very close to the 2060 Super at 1080p. At 1440p, the 2060 Super gets around 6% ahead, and considering the original 2060 is about 10% slower than the 2060 Super, means that at similar prices, the 6600 should be a slightly better deal. Or let's say, a less terrible deal, because 2060s really shouldn't cost this much to begin with. The RTX 3060 is about 8% ahead of the 6600 on 1080p, which is a noticeable performance improvement, but it isn't worth the 15-20% to higher price you would probably have to pay at the moment. So even though it works in AMD's favor, the fact that the 3060 is also a terrible deal right now and should be much, much cheaper compared to the 3060 Ti and the 6600 XT, 
being a better deal than a really terrible deal does not make it a good deal, just a slightly less terrible one. But the real difficulty for the 6600 here lies with the 6600 XT, which is around 17% ahead on 1080p and around 20% on 1440p. If the prices I talked about earlier hold up, we'll be looking at something around 10% of a price difference between the two, which makes the XT the much better buy. Especially if you do expect to upgrade your monitor to 1440p someday, where that extra performance will be really helpful. Now, realistically, this card should be closer to 20% cheaper than the XT, if not more. While it may not seem completely fair to compare it to the more expensive 3060 Ti, I do want to point out that the expected prices of the 3060 Ti should be around 35% more expensive while offering 33% performance increase on 1080p and 44% on Quad HD. If you have the money and you want to spend it, that is a tempting upgrade, especially for higher resolutions. Now, keep in mind, I used an Intel system for all these tests. Uh, you can see the exact specs in the description of the video. So you should expect a very small shift in AMD's favor if you have a Ryzen 5000 CPU and you turn the smart access memory on. Just keep in mind, the difference won't be big enough to make much of a difference or to change the balance between these cards. Now, of course, there is more to graphics cards than just pure performance. Uh, power consumption is something that AMD is doing very well, with the 6600 using even less than the 6600 XT, which was already more efficient than the 3060. And a low power use also means that any decent heatsink will get the job done. So even this 3 fan gigabyte Eagle is pretty much more than you need. I don't have other cards to compare it to, but looking at the thermal performance, it is obvious that the Eagle's cooler has no issues with the heat output of this chip and it can keep it nice and cool without making much noise. Features like upscaling technology may also play a part in your decision. Now, obviously, Nvidia had a good head start with the LSS and has pretty widespread support in many recent AAA titles, but I have to say I'm pretty impressed with how many games have added support for AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution in the short time it's been out. I think this should be a separate video once I try a couple of more titles, but I did play around with it in Far Cry 6 and it was honestly pretty impressive. While the game would normally be unplayable on a 4K resolution with an average FPS below 40, with super resolution set to ultra quality, I ended up with nicely playable 68 FPS and with graphics that looked pretty close to native. Now, upscaling is limited and game specific, both for Nvidia and AMD. And I don't really see anyone buying 4K gaming monitors to just game with these mid-range cards. But for anyone that already owns a 4K monitor, either for work or for something else, being able to enjoy more games on 4K because of proper upscalers is a really nice bonus. When it comes to ray tracing, AMD still has some work to do here. I do believe AMD needs to include it for marketing reasons because it is such a big hype word, but there are still huge performance hits with not much to show for it. So in my opinion, you shouldn't really care about ray tracing at the level of performance this card is offering and you should just enjoy your games without it. So. Yeah, this is a very rough product to review. On one hand, I'm really happy that AMD is adding some cheaper options and um, that this is a decent looking low power card that can play any game on 1080p easily. But on the other hand, I'm really struggling to get excited over a card that offers 2060 super levels of performance and then at a higher price than they used to cost almost two years ago. For this card to make sense, it would have to be 20% cheaper than the 6600 XT, if not more, and it would still sting to pay so much for it, but it would at least make some sense. If the prices I got end up being correct, even though technically this card is a better deal than the 2060 and the 3060 at the moment, it is still a bad deal. And if you really need to buy a GPU right now and you absolutely cannot wait, Getting a 6600 XT would be a better deal both for 1080p and 1440p gaming. But if you can, waiting for the market to stabilize a bit more would be the best option that I could recommend right now. Now, that's it for today. I really 
want to thank you for staying to the end. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this card and if you enjoyed this content and you want to be up to date with all the content we post, make sure you subscribe to Tech Testers. Bye guys and see you in the next one.